All right, so you can see over here on the left side, I got one of the walls put in already. It is definitely solid built and will not have any trouble supporting any kind of weight. And over here on the right side, you can see how I did that. Uh, I didn't finish this side yet because I'm not sure where I want the studs to be put yet. But basically what I did is I have one two by four laying flat on the floor and I screwed that in in about five different locations. Um, for the studs, I have the two by four turned on their side just to provide a slightly lower profile. So on the left side, I have five studs in the wall uh, lined up with where I want to hang some of the equipment, which we're going to start going over today. And then I just covered it with a sheet of 3 8 inch plywood. So down here on the floor, you'll see I have a gray box. And this is just a standard electrical junction box. Uh, it's also called a pull box. And this particular one is a lot larger than what you typically see in Lowe's or Home Depot. This one measures 24 inches across, 24 inches long, and then it's four inches deep. So we're essentially going to use this to build our own electrical cabinet uh, to house our circuit breakers and most of our wiring and our bus bars. So the plan for this electrical cabinet is to have the PCM60X charge controllers mounted directly above the cabinet and that will allow me to run a small piece of conduit from the charge controller down into the metal cabinet. Now the manufacturer's instructions for these charge controllers do specify, I think it says 8 inches between each controller. However, I had them mounted the same distance apart for about 2 years and I didn't have any problems with cooling whatsoever. So I'm going to go with that same layout for this particular build. Okay, so this is how I plan to lay out all of these components in this electrical cabinet. I believe I have them all spaced well enough to account for the radius of all the cable bending and everything like that. So the plan is for the battery input to enter on the right side of the cabinet over here, where it will go through the batrium shunt, and then come down into the ABB shunt trip disconnect breaker. After the shunt trip disconnect breaker, the positive and negative will come out to these two bus bars over here, where it will then exit the bus bars and probably go out either to the right side or the lower bottom side to the inverter. Uh, the PV inputs will likely come in from the left. The PV inputs will go up to the yellow PV disconnect breakers, which will then go up to each individual charge controller. The outputs from each charge controller will come back into the electrical panel and go down to these three circuit breakers down here, which will isolate the battery from the charge controllers. After the circuit breaker, it will then go down to the positive and negative bus bars down here. So the wire coming in will be 4 aught cable, the same as before. The wire coming from the charge controller to the breaker to these terminal strips will be 4 gauge. And the wire coming in from the PV input to these circuit breakers and up to the charge controller will be six gauge. And as I'm designing this cabinet, I'm keeping in mind that I may add a fourth controller at some point. Uh, so if that were to occur, I would likely connect a, a four by four by 12 wire way on the right and have the fourth controller up here. And then I would also add a fourth PV disconnect breaker and a fourth battery isolation breaker. But uh, that's definitely down the road and there's no plans to do that at this point. I just always wanna keep future designs in mind when I'm laying something like this out. So the first step we need to do is take all these components inside get the breaker mounted and the DIN rails for these. And then unfortunately we'll have to cut holes in the cover panel for the breakers to protrude through. All right, so back in the garage, I got the breaker laid out and I wanna make sure I can get it as square as possible. Um, so I measured from the bottom, I'm at seven and a half inches on each side of the breaker. And then measuring to the middle plate over here, since this is where I'll be cutting, I am at three and one sixteenth and three and one sixteenth. So this breaker has two mounting holes in the top and the bottom. There's two here. And there's another two up here. So I have this very long drill bit and I'm just gonna tap it with a hammer once or twice uh, just to make a mark where I wanna drill my pilot holes. Down, tap it. And now I've got two dots down there and two dots up there where I need to drill my pilot holes. All right, uh, so I discovered, unfortunately, I don't have any bolts long enough to mount the shunt trip breaker. Um, so I'm going to need to make a trip to the hardware store later. But in the meantime, we will move on to something else. The next items I need to mount are the two bus bars that I'm going to be using to connect all the cables to the output of the shunt trip breaker. Um, so I have them positioned in the lower right corner of the enclosure. And like before, I'm just going to mark off where the holes are. and drill my pilot holes. And once the pilot holes are drilled, I am just switching to a larger drill bit that will accommodate the full size of the screw I'll be using. All right.
right, so we got all eight screws in holding down these two bus bars. And on the bottom, you can see I just have one flat washer, one lock washer, and then one nut. Now, the next thing we want to figure out is how we want to attach these smaller breakers. Uh, they typically mount to a standard DIN rail like you see here. The breaker just clips right on the DIN rail. And then you can bolt the DIN rail into the case like so. But you'll notice the problem here is this breaker is smaller height wise. So it's not going to reach the top of the enclosure like this bigger ABB breaker does. So to solve that problem, I picked up some of this high profile DIN rail. And it's called high profile because it sits several inches off of the mounting point of the bracket. So this DIN rail sits two inches above the mounting point. So now when we clip our breaker on and set it next to the larger breaker, they are the same height, perfect for this cover to fit on. Uh, the cover will still cover the terminals and just the breaker portion will be sticking through the enclosure. So this is approximately where they will be mounted and installed. So I'm going to go ahead and measure these DIN rails out so they're equally spaced and get them drilled and mounted. All right, so I got both DIN rails mounted and I also got the Batrium shunt mounted in the back there as well. So now we're at the point where we need to consider cutting holes in the front of the enclosure for the circuit breakers. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom breakers on to measure where they sit in the DIN rail. Okay. And again, as I build this, I'm keeping in mind what would happen if I add a fourth controller. So I'm making sure to leave enough space um, so that I could insert a fourth breaker if I need to in the future. All right, so I'm going to take four measurements here. Uh, the first one I'm going to take is going to be from the right side of the panel, and I'm at exactly 14 inches, and the same measurement on the top of the breaker, also exactly at 14 inches. I'm then going to take uh, two measurements from the bottom of the panel. So I'm at 9 and 1 8 inch here, and 9 and 1 8 inch here. So the only opening I'm going to be cutting out is to fit this top protrusion through the front of the enclosure. These terminals and everything else behind this protrusion will be sitting behind the cover that goes on the front. Alright, so I have the front cover laying flat on the table. So I'm going to measure up from the bottom 9 and 1 8 inch. And I'm going to make a little mark with a pencil. And the reason why I'm using a pencil is because I want it to be removable. I don't want to have to have marks permanently left on the front of the case when I'm done. And I'm going to make a second mark over here, also at 9 and 1 8. So now I can use the straight edge of my square to draw a straight line across the two reference marks I have drawn. Alright, so there's one there and there's one there. And I'm just going to draw a straight line across. So this straight line represents the bottom of the circuit breakers. Now I need to measure in on that line 14 inches to measure where the circuit breakers will start. So 14 inches is right here. And I'm going to make a second mark at 14 inches slightly higher. So 14 inches is right there. And again, connect the two points at my straight edge. All right, so now that line represents the leftmost side of where the breakers will be sticking out. Now I also know the thickness of this breaker is 1 and 3 fourths inch. So when I add 9 and 1 eighths inch to 1 and 3 fourths inch, I get 10 and 7 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to put two more reference marks. 10 and 7 eighths of an inch is right here. 10 and 7 eighths of an inch is right here. And once again, I'll connect the two dots. Okay. So the last measurement I need to figure out and transcribe is the dimension left to right, the width of the three circuit breakers together. And I see that is six and three eighths of an inch. So for this step, I'm just gonna use a standard ruler since it's a little bit easier to measure versus the tape measure. So I am measuring six and three eighths of an inch. And then down here, I'm going to measure six and three eighths of an inch as well. And then connect the two dots. All right, I'm gonna put a pencil right here so the camera will actually focus on this. Um, but as you can see, this square right here 
is the area I need to cut out and remove for these three breakers to poke through. And uh, it's always important to double and triple check these measurements because, you know, this was a $110 enclosure. Once I punch a hole in it, you know, it's done for and I have to buy a new one. So, so to cut this, I'm going to be using this Dewalt 5.5 amp jigsaw. And the blade I'm going to be using is a Dewalt thin metal blade with 24 teeths per inch. Um, so obviously, since I can't plunge this directly into the center of the case, and I don't want to start and cut inward from one of the ends, I'm going to have to drill pilot holes in each one of these corners to get the blade started. So as I did before, I'm starting with a very small bit first, and then I'll work my way up to a larger bit. And uh, don't forget the safety glasses anytime you're doing anything with metal and metal filings. So I don't want it exactly in the corner, because I have to remember that I'm going to be using a larger bit later, and I don't want the hole from the larger bit to exceed the lines that I have drawn. So I'm going to guesstimate the larger bit I may be using and put the mark, uh, what was that, about an eighth of an inch inward. Okay. Alright, so I chose a drill bit that matches the thickness of the original blade. I don't want one that's overly thick because I don't want a hole that's too wide, but I want to make sure it's big enough that I can fit this blade in the hole that I drill. Now again, I want this surface to look nice when it's done. I don't want it to be all scratched up or anything. So I need to do something to protect the surface from the guide of the jigsaw from scratching up the surface. And to do that, I'm just going to put a few layers of masking tape. and then I clamp the metal on both sides. Now I am kind of afraid that as I start cutting this, uh, this plate is going to wobble up and down or start sliding back and forth. Uh, if that happens, I'll have to find a better way to secure it, but unfortunately I don't have a better way at this time. Um, so we're just gonna try it this way and see what happens. Now, as you can see, I did have a little bit of trouble getting it started there. Um, the jigsaw definitely does not like small turning radiuses in metal. The camera battery is about dead, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off and finish cutting out the square. And then once it's recharged, uh, we'll be back to show you hopefully how well it fits. Alright, so I finished mounting the remaining components to the enclosure. Uh, for the big shunt trip disconnect breaker, I ended up picking up these 3 inch screws. They are 10 by 32 size. Uh, and they fit perfectly through the breaker and through the back of the enclosure. I also mounted the Batrium shunt the same as I was mounting their components, along with the ground bar down behind the breakers to connect all the grounds from the charge controller and inverters. And I also finished cutting the three holes in the cover plate, and then I filed down any loose shavings that were sticking up, and uh, cleaned it up to get all the pencil marks and everything off. And as you can see, that lid fits on there near perfect, so this is going to be a fantastic enclosure. And all of the disconnects are easily accessible. I'll need to get some labels printed up for each one, just so they're easily identified. Um, now one thing I haven't mentioned that I do want to point out is that while this cabinet is a UL listed cabinet, uh, it is not UL listed for this purpose. So as soon as you start cutting holes in it and drilling things and like, there's three holes cut in this cabinet, this cabinet is no longer considered UL listed because your modifications void the UL listing on the device. So if you're concerned about UL listings, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, I'm looking at it from the point of quality. I know this is a heavy duty uh, quality cabinet versus some of the cheaper plastic things you can buy because of that UL listing. So yeah, I'm extremely pleased with how this came out. So we're going to wrap up the video here. Uh, in the next video, we'll be hopefully mounting and connecting our PCM60X charge controllers. Um, so thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, please don't forget to hit that like button below, and I'll see you on the next one.